Good afternoon, Miss, and good afternoon, colleagues. And today we're going to be looking at teaching and learning strategies. My group members are Felicia John, Savorn Outram, Fiona Garvey. Now, what are learning strategies? Learning strategies are style refers to a range of comp competing and contested theories that aim to account for differences in individual learning. Many theories share the proposition that humans can be classified according to their style of learning, but differ in how their purpose styles should be defined, categorized, and assessed. There are many types of learning. They are the visual or spatial learning, the linguistics or verbal. They have the interpersonal and the intrapersonal learning strategies. We have the logical, mathematical strategy. We have the musical or audio strategy. We had a bodily kinesthetic or physical strategy. Now we have the naturalistic strategy. Now these strategies are all linked to the Howard Gardner's eight intelligence. The visual or spatial intelligence learns best with visual icons or they are artistic, is able to read maps, blueprints, graphs with ease. The verbal, uh, the verbal linguistic intelligent person will often has, have a strong read, has strong reading skill, is able to write well, can process academic lectures effectively. The musical or rhythm smart intelligent person will tap into a pencil or foot, hum softly during silent work time, process this information by associating it with other beats and rhythm that allows them to make sense of date and store it in the brain. They learn and study best with headphones on. The logical mathematical thinker is good with math and numbers is a linear thinker, needs order and systematic directions or step in order to process the content. And then we have the bodily um, kinesthetic or the physical intelligent person who is good, who is always a good athlete. They have a excellent, they have excellent motor skills. They benefit from concrete hands-on learning activities. The interpersonal person enjoys socializing with others needs to be interact with others in order to process information and they benefit from group brainstorming and the interpersonal process information best by working alone in quiet or solitude quiet solitude and they find working in groups to be very distracting the naturalistic gravitates towards natural pattern they gain brain stimulation when in a natural outdoor environment they improve engagement with tasks when exposed to the light, sounds, and smell of the outdoor. Now, you can think about some ways in which you learn and figure out what type of learning styles or strategies you use to learn. I will now hand over to Miss Fiona Garvey, who will be doing the visual learning strategy. Good afternoon, Miss and colleagues. I will be continuing our presentation on visual learning strategies. Visual learning focuses on what we can see. So anything that is looked at or is watched is part of visual learning. Learners who grasp towards visual learning they appreciate seeing things in order to remember and learn it, rather than just hearing or experiencing for themselves. Some learning styles for visual learners are, number one, visual learners, they learn through seeing. So anything they can see, they learn it. They like, number two, they like written instruction and they prefer to take detailed notes as they listen to lecturers. Three, visual learners, they remember visual details with ease and prefer to see what they are learning. Four, they learn best with visual materials such as pictures, chart, videos, illustrated textbooks, and handouts. And five, 
They often like to have a quiet place to study. And lastly, they like to use colorful highlighters and mark, mark notes and text. They use highlighters to mark notes and text. These are the people who like to see attractive things. Welcome back. Verbal learning strategies. Verbal linguistic learning style refers to a person's ability to reason, solve problems, and learn using language. Because so much of the school curriculum is taught verbally, verbal linguistic learners tend to do well in schools. The verbal learner thrives in the classroom environments where teachers are relaying information via lectures and large group discussions. They love to demonstrate learning by verbally recalling information. Verbal learners often don't struggle in school because school is largely verbal, creating their ideal learning environment. A verbal learner loves words they think puns are hilarious and they love the, pl the, the play on word games. And they aren't afraid of kicking butts in a rousing game of Scrabble or words with friends. Strategies and techniques for verbal learning. Read notes aloud. Hear yourself talk. Verbally interpret charts, graphs, and images. Talk to yourself as you read, ask questions to guide your focus and then answer them. Summarize sections of chapters in your own words. Generate a list of study questions as you go. Create songs, rhymes, jingles as memory aids. Read and discuss topics. Good morning, Miss. Good morning, class. Today, I will be demonstrating how students learn by listening to verbal presentations. By doing so, I will be reciting a poem in which I'll expect my students to listen to. Later on in my presentation, I am going to discuss whether or not Verbal presentations are effective learning strategies. I now begin my poem. My poem is going to be used to introduce a lesson that is based on nutrients. The topic for that lesson is going to be food nutrients. However, I will not be stating the topic. I am going to start the poem, recite it, and ask my class to guess what the topic is based on what they have learned by listening to the poem. How do you stay healthy? Eat right, eat right. Food helps us shine, food helps us grow. Not actually the food, but the chemicals in the food. These are so good, they make us shine from head to toes. Now I'll be doing naturalistic learning strategies. Naturalistic learning strategies, they are instinctively interesting in and are aware of their surroundings. They learn very easily outdoors and are drawn to working with nature. They enjoy opportunities to learn about living things like plants, animals, and other Bio biology related subjects and natural events such as weather or geology. They are very in tune with their environment. Here is a picture of students enjoying and learning in nature. Characteristic of naturalistic learners, they like to work outside. They enjoy geography, weather, learn about the environment. They are very good at characterizing, organizing, and planning. They are interested in preservation and conservation and likes to work with animals. 
These people learn best by studying nature patterns such as erosion and climate, learning how things work and their causes and effect relationships. Oral auditory musical learning strategies. Auditory learning means that a student learns most effectively by listening. They would prefer listening to a lecture over reading a textbook or hearing the instruction for a project instead of figuring it out hands on. Learning style. Dominant auditory. Auditory learners learn through listening. They like to have music on while they study. They like to read aloud and often like to talk to themselves or create musical jingles to help them learn new materials. They remember by talking out loud and they like to have things explained orally rather than true written instructions. My name is Felicia John, and I will be looking at the physical and kinesthetic learning strategies. The physical or kinesthetic learning strategies, or tactile learning, is a learning style in which learning takes place by students carrying out physical activities rather than listening to a lecture or watching demonstration. This is where the students need, the, need that hands-on approach or that experience to learning. The kinesthetic learner learns through moving, doing, and touching stuff. They need that physical involvement with their activity or their task. An example of this would be the home economics teacher who will have to show the students how to make a dish or how to stitch a garment, how to construct a garment, how to use a sewing machine, and so on. They need to take frequent study breaks because the minds are so overwhelmed at times, they take frequent study breaks. They like to chew gum or snack while they're studying. The kinesthetic learner lo like to move around when talking or listening. They are explorers at heart and like to learn through participation in what they are learning. They like to stand rather than sit when learning something new. We will now move on to what our teaching strategy. Now, teaching strategy is the pattern of teaching based on the set of strategies used within the classroom that you believe as a teacher will help your students to learn the material most effectively. Teaching styles does not only refer to the teaching strategies and methods employed, but also the use of certain kind of rhetoric. There are different types or different strategies in which, in which a teacher can carry out her lesson. We have here the indirect instruction, we have the experimental learning, we have the independent study, and we have the interactive instruction, and we have the direct instruction. They are different methods in which you can carry out your teaching strategies. For example, you can have games and, and stimulation. We have the learning based or problem solve. We have role play, a presentation, it could either be a visual presentation or auditory presentation, a verbal presentation, a discussion, whether it be in with your class by itself or they, you put them in groups or you have a discussion with your class. They have brainstorming, we have case study, you give them a case study or um, a project to have research on. You give them question answer method, or we have the project design method. Then there are the seven teaching strategies, where is the interactive teaching, the station teaching, the peer teaching, the cooperative learning, self-instructional strategies, the cognitive strategies, and team teaching. Now we will be going on to five of 
the learning, the teaching strategy, sorry. We will now move on to the student learner center teacher strategy. Now this, yes, we will now go on to the student or learner center teaching strategy. The student center learning, also known as the learner center education, broadly encompasses methods of teacher that shift the focus on, of instruction from the teacher to the student. This is where the student is in charge or in control of what they learn. We have here the, some methods in which the learner centered can be um, taught. We have the cooperative learning, which involves small groups working together to accomplish a learning task. We have presentations where um, learners presented, present their assignments. Students can do this in groups or individually. Then we have the panel export method where these are ways students include many voices on a subject. Students can write and ask the question in a question and answer session. Then you have the KWL. This is put into a poster. What do you know? What you want to know? What do you want to learn? How about, the, how, about how to enhance the version? We have small groups. And this is what can a small group of people accomplish throughout the best characteristics of the group assign. And this is where you assign roles. Discussion, this is where you present an issue and have the students talk about it. If they need to add information and have them go find it. We create media where you have the students present an issue and have the students create a public service video. Then you have brainstorming where it puts the thinker to work and present a situation. And then the this is where you ask the learner to be creative. Then you have a case study where you use studies in the classroom to learn about complex issue and apply critical thinking. Then you have the jigsaw method where it breaks students into groups or where you break the class into groups rather and give each member a different task and bring the group back to one and have them display what they would have gathered. Then you have the learner centered, which is break up the classroom into different activities. After a set of time, you ask them to rotate around and share their ideas. Then we have the experiments. This is design. It is a design where experiments, uh, where we have experiments and have students engage or ask them to design their own tasks. The advantages of the student center and the learner center. It strengthens students' motivation. It promotes peer communication. It reduces disruptive behavior. It builds student-teacher relationship. It promotes discovery and have active learning. It promotes responsibility for one's own learning and the disadvantages for these are the problem of misconception because maybe the person um, or a peer would have been teaching the teaching one another and they they self haven't grasped the concept of what the teacher would have wanted them to grasp and the give the peers the wrong information. Then we have learning in an alternative way. They have different ways in which they would learn again. And then we have lack of team skills. They don't want to cooperate uh, or they, the team doesn't have the skill to carry out the task given. We have a different stage of the same project. Maybe they uh, all of them have different tasks, but they come with the same stage in the project problem of instruction. They fail to follow the instruction given by the teacher and they may feel uncomfortable. Maybe they have had a conflict with their peers and then they are placed in a group with the peers that they don't interact with and that may cause problem. We will now go on to the teacher center strategy. This is where a teacher, it is where Activity in a class is centered on the teacher. It can be compared to the learner center approach. The teacher is an effective model of the target language. 
and is important and is an important source of information on how the learners are doing. The advantages of the teacher centers is that it strengthens students' motivation. It promotes peer communication. It reduces disruptive behavior. It builds student-teacher relationships. It promotes discovery and active learning. It promotes responsibility for one's own learning as well. Then we have the disadvantages. It is a teacher-centered method and teacher talking time might be too long. It is more focused on accuracy than fluency, except in the very, in the very last stage. Students may get bored and unwilling to participate. And since everything is scaffold, learners may not remember things. Not suitable for, it is not suitable for all the learning styles. Now, methods in which we can incorporate the teacher-centered methods. We can have um, teachers doing lecturing or demonstrating. We have assignments or homework that could be given to the students. We have memorizing of the work. We have reviewing of the work. And we have question and answering of the work. And then we have discussion. Now, let us compare the teacher center and the learner center approach strategy. Now, with the teacher center approach, the learning approach is adultery. Only adultery learner personalities are carried along about 8% of the class. Low learning productivity, for example, individual low percentage and class low percentage. Learning is passive. Attention span is violated, leading to ADD. For the learner center approach, the learner approach is visual and, and or kinesthetic. Almost all learners' persona personalities are carried along about 96% of the class. High learning pro productivity, for example, in visual learning productivity and class productivity are high. Learn is, is, a is fully active. Attention span does not apply to ADD. Does not apply and ADD is overcome. So it is best suited that we use the learner center approach to carry out our lessons so we won't have such a small percentage of productivity in our classrooms. Constructivism, inquiry based. Constructivism is the theory that says leader learners construct knowledge rather than just passively take in information. As people experience the world and reflect upon those experiences, they build their own representations and incorporate new information into their pre existing knowledge. Confirmation inquiry. Students are given a question, an answer, and the method to reach the answer. Students' aim is to learn how the method works. Structured inquiry. Students are given an open question and a method of solution. Students' aim is to find the answer. Guided inquiry. Students are given an open question Students' aim is to design a method of solution to reach the answer. Open inquiry. Students are allowed resources, time, and support. Students' aim is to develop their own questions, method of solution, and answers. Teaching methods. Constructivist inquiry based, students learn by interactions with their environment. Berner, Dewey, Piaget, Lev Vygotsky, Immanuel Kant, these are all associated with cognitive learning theories. However, with my area of study being a practical area of study, I think my study. Um, 
my area of study circulates mostly around Immanuel Kant's theory of learning, where he mentioned, where he stated, sorry, that knowledge must exist prior to experience. I believe that in my area of study, that's really applicable because with home economics, you cannot send students into the foods lab or into the management room or the textiles room and expect them to know what to do if they are not taught theoretically about those rooms and what they are to do in there, which includes the rules and regulations of those rooms before they can get into working practically in those rooms. Problem-based learning, real world problem posed to students. Students must solve problems as means of learning content and applying to real life. Student-centered, what students know versus what they need to know to solve problems. Group work is common. Essential ingredients, in inquiry-based education. Teacher guidance, values and builds upon students' reasoning, scaffolding. Connects to students' experience. Valued outcomes, inquiring minds, prepared for uncertain future and a lifelong learning, understanding of nature, of science and math, Classroom culture, shared sense of purpose slash justification, value mistakes, contributions, they're open-minded, dialogic, shared ownership, type of questions, open slash multiple solution strategies, experienced as real and or scientifically relevant, what students do, pose questions, inquire the five E's, engage explore explain extend and evaluate they collaborate cooperative and collaborative teaching strategies cooperative teaching cooperative learning is a successful teaching strategy in which small small teams each with students of different levels of ability use a variety of learning activities to improve their understanding of a subject. Each member of a team is responsible not only for learning, learning what is taught, but also for helping teammates to learn, thus creating an atmosphere of achievement. Each member is responsible for a portion of the work that's in a corporate, cooperative learning. And many times the teacher already knows the problem and solution students will be working towards. That is for cooperative learning. Now for the collaborative learning, the definition is collaborative learning is based on an idea that learner is a natural social act in which the participants, they talk among themselves. It is through the talk that learning occurs. And the participants, they work together to solve a problem. And many times the teacher does not have a preset notion of the problem or solution that students will be researching. Cooperative and collaborative learning is very similar. It is a teaching and a learning strategy where students are grouped together to scrutinize a particular assignment or topic to maximize their own strength and each other's learning. Some differences between collaborative and cooperative learning are, for the cooperative learning, the instructor is the center of authority in the class. The students work together in small groups. They, face, they have face-to-face -face interaction. Positive interdependence 
interpersonal skills. Teaching become learners. Teachers become learners at times and learners sometimes teach. That is in a cooperative learning environment. Now in a collaborative, knowledge is a social construct. It promotes students' faculty interaction and similarity. It encourages diversity and understanding. It encourages diversity and understanding for students. Create an environment of active, involved, ex explore, explore. It involves exploratory learning. Student team together to explore a significant question or create a meaningful project. The cooperative and collaborative learning strategy, they all have advantage and disadvantage. Some of the advantages include, it has been shown to have a positive effect on students' learning when compared to individuals or competitive conditions. It also has the potential to produce a level of engagement that other forms of learning cannot. Students may explain things better to another student than a teacher to the class. Students learn how to teach each other and explain material in their own words. Questions are more likely to be asked and answered in a group set in this type of group setting. Some disadvantages. A boarding is making the students responsible for each other's learning apart from themselves. One study showed that in group of mixed ability, low achieving students become passive and do not focus on the class. And depending on the individual motivation and interest on a particular subject, that will determine how well they will learn. And lastly, low achievers become puzzled because of so many questions. This has brought us to the end of this part of the presentation. Now we have a demonstration of cooperative learning strategy and student-centered teaching strategy. Thank you for watching. Good morning, grade seven. And how are you this morning? Yes, teacher is glad. Teacher is happy when you all are doing fine. And why are you so excited this morning, though? Mm, I remember. Teacher promised you something. Teacher promised you all something exciting today, no? Yes. Good. So, what are what is the topic we say we will look at? Very good. We're looking at vegetables. I guess everybody likes vegetables because everybody's smiling. Okay. Good. So at the end of this class, each and every one of you here will be able to explain to teacher what is a vegetable. Then you all will have to, you all will be able to classify the vegetables in their correct classes we will be using two strategy today we will lo look at cooperative learning where you all will cooperate and teacher will give you some pictures to look at you can visualize it and you will think about it then you will pair and you will share okay so let's go right away into this lesson what is a vegetable? Good. Did you don't want to hear now? Think. Remember the rules? You have to think. Pair and then you will share. Good. So look around in the classroom. Teacher 
paste a lot of picture on the wall with vegetables so look around the classroom and think i'm gonna allow you two minutes to think so look around and think good two minutes is up peer now you turn to your peer and you talk about what you were thinking or probably what you would have learned sometime about vegetable talk with your peer now is the time for you to talk talk good so now that you've finished talking i overheard some brilliant ideas i like when i hear brilliant ideas from children good let's hear from the group there Vegetable is a part of a plant. Yes, very good teacher. You got that right. Not a group. It is used for food. Very good. Give them a clap. And another group. It is very nutritious. Wow, you all. All of those answers you give are good. They are valuable. They are important. Good. So from looking at the picture, you would have gathered all of that along with your previous knowledge, right? Good. So now it's time for us to put all the those ideas together to come up with one definite answer to what is a vegetable. Good. A vegetable is, we can say it is a part of a plant yes and what can we say other than that that is used for food very good that sounds good we can use that a vegetable is a part of a plant that is used for food good very good good so this is what our answer is vegetables are part of a plant that are used as food very good take this down in your notebook you see how good is it when we can cooperate and learn yes and the picture somebody said the picture made them get a more better idea of what they have to do good so pictures are very important that means students who learn by picture we call them visual learners right good so take this down in your notebook read it to me one more time vegetables are part of a plant that are used as food very good good so now teacher we will go to another aspect where we'll have to classify vegetables good so when we're classifying vegetables let's go back to our answer just now let's say vegetables are part of a plant good let me hear some parts of a plant let us go back to small days work when we were labeling the plant we remember that good we start with the root stem, leaf, flower, fruit. Some have to work. Very good. So those are parts of the plant. And do you know that from a plant, we eat some part of it? Either you eat the leaf, the stem, the root. Good. So those are called vegetables. So now this is the exciting part. We will be going into the, to do a nature walk. We are going to a field trip at Farmer Green's garden. He, yes, he said that he, have, he has a lot of, a variety of goodies. Yes, you call it goodies. Yes, he has a lot of vegetables here. So we're going to go there and we will take them up, pick the different type of vegetables. We will do that in pairs. So 
there are seven type of vegetables, seven classes, and each pair that I place you in, each pair will look at one. Good, so as you go through the door, your pair teacher will give you this. Whichever group got this, you will look at this. Whichever pair get leaves, you will look for all the leafy vegetables. Whoever got tuber will look for all the tuber vegetables, okay? And it goes like that. Do you understand? Who get root vegetable will look for all the root vegetables. And then we will come back and we will make a nice display of all the vegetables that you discover. And we will take note of each and every one of them. So this is also like a cooperative learning. Yes, because you have to cooperate with your peer. And it's also, it's a naturalistic learning. People who learn by nature, they will enjoy this part. Okay, class? So now we will form two lines, male and female, and we walk quietly out the door. And don't forget to walk with your pen and your notebook so that you can take note while you are there. Okay, class? Good. So, let us go. Now that we are through with our field trip, Farmer Green was kind enough to give us some samples of the different classes of vegetables and you were all able to identify the part of the plant they came from. You all did a good job in doing that and you all now clearly understand that Vegetables can be classified according to the to the part of the plant. For example, the fruit, these came from the fruit. These are bulbs. These type of vegetables are bulbs. We have leafy vegetables. Seeds. These are the peas. Here, we must thank Mr. Farmer Green for allowing us this privilege to gathers things from his farm okay good so let us recap vegetables are part of a plant used for food vegetable can be classified according to the part of the plant from which they came very good you all did great must thank you for participating participation was 100% that was extremely well now yes yeah, somebody say they enjoy the nice water coconut and th those things they would like to have more nature walk okay class the teacher will consider that and if that is what you like and makes you learn teacher will enforce more learning like this okay okay thank you it was nice having you see you in the next class